A while ago, I had a putting lesson, and now all of a sudden, six months later, I've started hauling every single putt that I look at. But why? Let's find out, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel and this is your very first time watching my content, first of all, welcome. Second of all, please make sure you don't leave before you do hit that subscribe button below. On this channel, I bring you guys golf-related content every single day, hopefully to help you raise your game, mainly to help you lower that handicap, but generally just to get you enjoying golf loads more. In today's video, this is a follow-up putting lesson with European tour coach Chris Dennis, and we're gonna see exactly why my putting has gone from this to this. So Chris, what have I caught you doing here to my putter? Uh, so today we're going to use cap toe. So from James's last lesson, we got the film, we went through everything on camera. We have the last lesson actually on that lovely little TV screen over there as there well. Right it is. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at, obviously James, if you've watched the last videos, has been hauling quite a lot of putts. So what we're going to do today is get the numbers, see what the changes we did, how they're affecting his path, his face, everything that's happened with the putter and to see why he's holding more putts. So we're just going to calibrate his putter now. And I'm actually, I'm actually going to say as well, so in the last video, I said that I could have changed putter, I could have gone for another honeymoon period, but I decided to stay with the putter I was using, and I'm still with it. So I'm still with the TaylorMade Spider X. It's seen a lot of use actually now. Um, the grip, as you can see, is nicely worn, but, but for me, the main reason behind this video is because I think people generally go for golf lessons reactively. They go for golf lessons when things aren't going well, when things are going badly. But now, I'm actually putting well. I'd probably say I'm almost putting the best I've ever putted. And I want to know why. I want to know how can I recreate it? How can I make it more consistent? And that's why we're here. That's why we're now inside a studio. I must say, it's quite a nice studio, this. This is the new studio here at Chris's location at Waterfront. Looks pretty impressive. We've got a nice long rolling mat there. Capto putting, what's it called? Yeah, Capto we're using. So it is an alternative to sand putt lab, but it's very portable, easy for us to use. We can take it out on the putting green. But today, weather's not the greatest. It hasn't took a turn for the worst. The shutters so are down. Shutters are down, we're keeping warm and we can do it all inside. Perfect, so what have you just done to my putter there? So there we're just getting that registered so it's now going to pick up the data. So it's got on there, it's a certain, it's 17 inches up the shaft so we can start to get a consistent reading from the... Oh. Perfect, so that's <laughs> eventually. Uh, so that's given us now, we're going to be able to look at what loft and lie it's got on there. So we want to know the lie. The length of the putter is 34 inches, and like we say, James has been using it for a while now, which was better than before. He had, you know, more putters than he did on dinners. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is get the loft. Right, so Chris, just while you're measuring the loft of this putter, do you want to talk us through briefly what we worked on in the last lesson? So what we'd kind of look for to... Yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> What we worked on last time is, as you'll see from the videos, it'll now come up. We worked on James's ball position. So before the ball was quite a long way forward in his stance. Again, down the line, we looked at his arms not matching the shaft. So it was a struggle to get a consistent roll on the ball. When Big we struggle. Had, Big struggle. Which again, James struggled with distance control and sometimes obviously starting the ball online. So that was a big effect to those two points. So we worked on his ball position, 
worked on his arms, matching the shaft to dress, and then also what we finally worked on was his release because he had a lot of puts where he would go short back, long through. So we tried to reverse that to get a longer backstroke, let the putter swing and do the work, and go through. So, we're going to take some putts now, we're going to refilm his stroke and that will now come up and we can see the changes, see how it's taken effect and then we're going to put that to the numbers. Let's do it. Let's do it now. Right, okay, so we've got a 15 foot putt. We're going to line every putt up as we would on the putting green, straight towards the target. Right, so 15 foot, 15 foot. What kind of pace are we talking for this? Well, if you hit it different ways on the mic, it's slightly different. We'll say this is about a ten and a half on the arm stick. I like on the mirror in front of me there, that helps. The mirror in front, check the ball position. Oh, oh. Oh, that's so we just snuck in on the right edge. So on board. So I must say guys, if you've never been for a putting lesson inside, it is actually quite a nice change, obviously we've been out of the putting green and been freezing cold. Go. Never up, never in. So guys, we've just hit a bunch of putts there and we're going to have a look at the cap toe averages. We're going to have a look at what I'm doing well, what I'm doing still maybe not so well. And then we're going to have a look at a bit of a difference between today's putting stroke and the putting stroke and set up from the last lesson six months ago. So Chris, do you want to talk us through what I'm doing hopefully well and potentially kind of not so well? Yeah, so um, before, obviously, we don't, unfortunately, we don't have the data from your stroke when you first started. But we can see that we, with the ball position being very forward originally, we would have seen the path working a long way left. Yeah. Okay. We can see now from today your averages, the path, so the track, is still working a little bit out to in by one degrees, but that, you know, is very good. You still know? in the green zone there, which is nice. Still in the green zone, so that's what we want, you know. We want to work on getting that a little bit more neutral. The face is matching perfect to the track okay so to the path so what you've got there is it's pretty much starting left and staying there by one yeah. degree okay so generally what i would do is aim right which you see a lot of when we play don't you yeah so a lot of the times james's pattern is to be a little bit close so aim a little bit more break and then pull it very slightly onto target okay another big thing is what we was looking at is james's you know, tempo, so ratio of backstroke to through stroke. So we can see that now he's in the green, okay? So again, he's not now going short back and accelerating through. Yeah. So his distance control has become a lot better, again. Which I've noticed massively when I'm playing, to be fair, as well. Certainly when we was in Portugal, you know, although it was me doing all the work and winning all the holes, James was there taking part, but he's putting, you can see his pace was a lot better. So he was leaving himself tappings and I was knocking him for birdies, but you know, that's a given. When you've got it, you've got it. <laughs> Occasionally. Um, so you can see that energy is, we're losing 10% of energy. Okay, so if we go on to the energy, we can see that we're getting a little bit of a strike towards the toe. Okay. So what that's going to do is, again, it's going to have that little bit of hook spin on there, which again is James's tendency to aim right. So it's taking a little bit of energy off. So the path's working left, it's catching it slightly on the toe. So we need to look at why that's happening and what we're going to change. So again, cap toe's great. We can use it inside, we can use it outside. You know, for some players, they want to see how it works out on the green because that is your real element. In here we've got a straight put, but we can use it on right to left, left to right, to see what patterns people might get. So, if we now move over onto the videos, which have gone off. Don't you love Apple TV? It's unbelievable. We've got a lovely little montage of pictures coming up though. Here we've got some 
Longwood. There's a bear there and uh, a killer whale. Killer whale. And so some elephants. Stampede of elephants. There we go. So straight away from setup, we can see that the ball position now is inside his left heel. Okay, whereas it was on his right toe originally on the left. Shoe game's strong again though, isn't it? Look at that. Trainers and golf shoes matching. Same putter, which is a rarity. So again, if we look, we can see how the shaft angle, because the ball's forward, the, the angle of the shaft is back. So if yes. I was to draw a line up there, you'll see how we have got it angled. And that's, back. A, I mean, looking at that, I can't believe that I've ever let it get like that, to be fair. We're adding loft, you know, it might feel comfortable at the time, which it did, but he obviously wasn't holding many putts, and I was having many convincing victories. Well. If we... <laughs> If we now look from today, we can see that shaft is straight up, and there's no take uh, or adding loft to the putter, so it's a very good setup. Okay, so one thing that we would do to help his path, you know, it's still a little bit left. You know, we saw how it was working a little bit out to in. If we was to add a little bit of weight onto his left side here, we'd get his left eye in line with the ball, mm -hmm. as opposed to a little bit behind it. So a little bit more weight left would encourage that path to be a little bit more out to the right. Which I must admit we did mention in the lesson, I remember that, I do. Yeah, so it's something, big improvements, but we can still see we can get that ball rolling even better with a little bit of weight on the left. Okay. Okay. If we switch those over now. Rochelle, happy birthday. <laughs> uh, right. Isn't she from that band, Saturdays? Could be. Okay, so now down the line, obviously one of the big things that we worked on with James in his session was trying to get these arms matching the shaft better. So we slightly changed his posture, we got him a little bit taller and his arms to... And this was actually after, this was post lesson wasn't it? I don't think this was the initial one. Yeah, exactly. So we can see it was, he was improved and then we can see today how now we are getting those arms to match, you know. So, great work to get those matching together. I mean, the only big difference is, is it looks like James has had a good Christmas and put on a bit of timber. <laughs> Luckily uh, it went off then. Oh, shuffling hell. <laughs> but if you want to watch Ted. Ted's a there. great film, Ted. We're back up and running. You mentioned about my Christmas. It's been a good summer, is what we'll say. Yeah, it's been a good summer. He's had too many holidays, too many vino di tintos, <laughs> and he's gained a few pounds. He's not been to the gym recently. So again, arms are matching the shaft very well now, so that's tidied up the stroke. So you can see that that's helped us now work it as one. Um, so good improvements, that's where we've seen the, obviously the improvements in holding more putts whilst he's been playing recently. So it has taken obviously six months, it has taken a little bit of practice, doesn't always practice, does James? No. Um, but you can see it's just putting the time in, getting those key points ticked off, and we can start to see the improvements from the data. Yeah. You know, data is something that most people in a putting lesson won't get. You know, you can see your own feedback, but we can check that on numbers. Even if it's one degree out, that's something that we want to really improve to get you put in the best as possible. So talking about numbers, Chris, what were you saying that now hopefully we're going to try and improve to make it even better? So again, like we say about, we went on to, you know, we talked about the face, We've talked about the path of the club, tempo was much improved, but now we're going to talk about the energy. Okay, so we can see here, first of all, that James is still striking a little bit down onto the ball, so that's creating some backspin. So through backspin energy, we're losing 6% of the energy. Which is going to make distance control more difficult. Distance control is certainly going to be a little bit more difficult. You know, 6% 6, 6, uh, is not, you know, a massive amount but it's something that we want to take care of so when we went through the face we could see that that was square to the path so the path was working 1.1 degrees left the face has matched that so yeah. it's coming off with that's pretty neutral but because the path's working left we're seeing that we're getting a little bit of a toe strike so as a result we're losing some uh, energy through the toe strike so 4.6 percent so again, that path working left, if we've got a ball and it's starting to come in and working left, it's going to bring it closer to hitting the toe. Yeah. Okay. So to change those, 
like we discussed when we saw the face on videos, we want to look at getting James to have a little bit of weight on the left. Mm -hmm. It's going to help his path a little bit out to the right and hopefully get him hitting a little bit up on the ball. Because although he's made great improvements, there's still room for him to nearly catch me up. And I think that's a huge part that people can take into account for any lessons that you have. No matter how much you progress, I feel like I've progressed massively with my putting. If you've watched my vlogs and videos, you will know just how successful it's been in comparison to maybe the previous six months where everything missed and missed again and potentially missed again. But I want to make it even better. I want to make it more consistent, potentially hold more putts and just feel even more comfortable over it. Okay, so as you can see, James is in the mirror now. So we're going to use that so we've got behind his head, he can see clearly when he looks in there, adding a little bit of weight on the left leg. Good, so from there he can watch himself in the mirror to set up, and then from there he can just go ahead and make a stroke. Oh! Okay, so we're just going to hit one now one-handed, like we did in the previous lesson, to get a feel of that putter swinging with a natural arm. Where do you feel your weight is at centre? Heels or toes? Heels. Let's go to toes. Not by exaggerating, but... That felt really good. Come back in now to two hands. I want you to pull down. So what's your feel? Where's your weight at the moment? It felt heels, but it's felt a lot better since you said going to the toes. Good, so we'll put it a little bit forward to the toes. That should help us with the path work out right as well. So good. Good. So it's a good roll. Tempo's good. So let's now have a look at the numbers. They're better numbers, are they? Face, Very good. face a little bit open, path better. So path slightly better. So you can see we've gone from 1.1 to 0.8. So again, little improvement, mm. but that's a little bit more that we want. You know, in fairness, towards... if, it wasn't, if it's still in the green, it's not miles out anyway, is it? It's just a little bit of it's not miles out, you know, it's been really precise now, so, you know, okay, we're not playing on tour by any means, you know. No. Definitely not. <laughs> um, but we're trying to get as close to perfection as we can. It's a game of perfection, you know, but we want to get it so it's consistent. If I can get that consistent, we can put a lot better. Uh, the face has changed, it's slightly open, okay, so it's going to start online better, okay, but we are going to put some kind of spin onto that ball, so... Ratio is good as before, so we're happy with that. We've lost less energy. Before it was we was losing 10.9, I yeah. think, off the top of my head. We're now down to 4.2. So here we can see... We're not hitting down on it as much, are we? Not as down on it as much, because we can see that we're only losing 1.3 as opposed to 6.5. Three, three, I, I believe. Yeah, three. <coughs> Um, it is a little bit off the heel now, but we don't mind that because we can see that we've made a change. Mm -hmm. So we can see a change in the pattern. Uh, again, very minimal cut spin. So you know, losing 0.4. And again, here we've half the energy that we're, we're losing. So we have made a change. We can see from the numbers how that is now affecting that we're losing a lot less energy. Yeah. So. Didn't take much, you know, we went back to the original right hand, letting it swing, okay. We then also looked at weighting your feet, so it's something that you might not think about when you're putting. Yeah. But we don't want you, again, in your full swing, we wouldn't have you sat back in your heels, we wouldn't have you in your toes. Mm -hmm. We want it to be that, you know, we have it even. For you, you was too much in the toes, uh, too much in the heels. We've got you to feel it a little bit forward, and that's helping with the path 
and the face. And we both coach with body track as well, so maybe that's something we could look at doing. Guys, I'd like you to hit those comments below. If you've ever seen body track, that's a piece of coaching technology. It's basically like a magic carpet that you stand on. It tells you exactly where your pressure is, exactly where your weight movements are. And I've used it for coaching a lot and I found it very, very helpful. So if you want to see us with that, Brown has sent you a message. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to see us use that then hit those comments below and see if we can improve the putting even more yes definitely it's another piece of technology you may never have seen so we'll put it into action yeah so chris thanks for your time no problem really appreciate time. it guys thank you so much for watching i do hope you've enjoyed that my putting at the moment feels as good as it's felt for quite a long time so massive kind of kudos to chris for that because i was in a very very bad place when I put in, I think, a dark. I was in a very dark place, so three put in a lot, and you know what it's like, guys, when you hit it off good off the tee, hit your irons good, you chip fairly well, and then you just can't seem to put to save your life. So all I can say is if you are in that place and you're not quite putting too well, reach out for lessons. If you're in the Yorkshire area, then I mean, you yep. travel around anyway, don't you? But travel around, um, yeah. I will put Chris's details below there. It's helped me massively. It could possibly help you. And all that's left to do now really is go and put this into practice and actually work on it. I'm going to hold my hands up and say I've not really practiced as much as I would have liked to, but I think we'd probably have seen more improvements we've had. So. Yeah, so it's one of those guys, it all takes practice. James is always jet setting off somewhere, like he is, he's off to Cyprus on Friday, so he's just got to fit the time into practice. But if you're in the Yorkshire area near Waterfront, give me a shout, come and see the studio. I suppose what's left to say guys is thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed that, make sure you do leave us a like. Comment below. Body track. Yeah, if you want to see body track. And I guess as always, we'll see you tomorrow.